Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, got a 2006 Volkswagen, it's a TDI, turbo diesel injection. I'm gonna be putting a new cam in it. And uh, I'll get the old one out and I'll just share my knowledge. And uh, got a good bit of other parts to put on too. However, the main focus of me creating this video is to shed some light on these uh, the cam failures on these TDIs. So uh, we're gonna talk about why they fail, how to tell uh, the symptoms. So I'm gonna give you guys a spiel real quick, a little rundown uh, of what's going on. Found the vehicle, went and checked it out. And the guy said uh, he thought it had jump time. You know, it still ran, but just low power. You know, uh, check engine light was on. It's uh, noisy, the engine has a racket in it. You'll see that in this clip that I'm gonna play next. Um, so uh, pretty much I trailered the vehicle home with my truck and I drove it a handful of times just to, you know, try to troubleshoot it. And uh, yeah, came, brought it back to the shop, got the valve cover off. And by then I pretty much pinpointed the problem. So check it out. If uh, the cam has busted a lifter on one of the valves, you can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it on the phone. So now I'm gonna dive into about uh, three weeks ago when I started tearing into this thing and ordered the parts I needed. So just like, subscribe. I wanna hear what you gotta think or what you gotta say. Talk shit, I don't care. Uh, enjoy the video. Uh, I'm gonna pop the caps off now and we'll get to it. So now, uh, the cam's loose, but it slit, locks it in to the pump. It's hung up. I'll try to work it out of there, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna take my time, get this intake off. There's probably four bolts holding that pump onto the head. And then that cam should just lift right on up out of there. We'll bring it over here to the bent. The pump's off. It did have four bolts holding it to the head. They're kind of tricky. And to gain access to them, I just took the whole air box out and the intake, which didn't take long. And, uh, but on these, you know, these vehicles do have a lot of plastic and uh, brittleness, some of them. So I try to be gentle. So anyways, when that pump separates from the head, First thing you're going to notice is the cam just come up out of there. It could. It's not going to like shoot out of there, but you can pick it up out of there. You're not fighting nothing. Uh, but also, there's a gasket that goes here on the back side of this fuel pump against the head. And it looks like this. No, it looks like that. Yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and replace that. Camshaft seal, blah, blah, blah. All right. All this came out of that head. So, I mean, look at that damage. It's the worst I've seen on a lifter. I mean, it watered the whole thing out. So, and none of the others were far behind it. So, that's why we got new ones. And uh, new bearings for caps uh, and bridges. Uh, the new ones are already in the head. I mean, look at that, that's worn, you can see it. I guess that's bronze, whatever it is, it's worn. Now, uh, these are your rocker arms is, that are firing your injectors, okay? So, each one of these, I guess you call them tongues, they're gonna correlate with one of these fat lobes you got four of, okay? So, it just works like a valve, but instead of pushing a valve down, it's pushing down an injector. So over time, you can see why that would wear out with, uh, yeah, I mean, you already got all those red lobes firing your, uh, your valves, but then on top of that, you're gonna put four diesel injectors on there too. So anyhow, 
I mean, and it's got scoring on it. I mean, you can see. Look at that. It don't have the integrity that this new cam does. That one, that one is uh, fresh right there. So let me get on back to it. And, uh, you know, like I said, we got new coolant system parts. We got water pump, thermostat, uh, outlets. We don't want that plastic breaking when you're on a road trip. This will be the last lifter here. Okay. I should fit snug. It's, you should be able to spin it though once you get down in there. All of them spin. They're not seized up. Brand new lifters. Okay. The head's ready to receive the cam. Got your bearings, all new lifters. Got the gasket for the pump. Lubed up real nice. Got all the caps snug. They're not torqued. That's something my list to do next after I get this pump back on. I'll put the intake and everything back together. After that, I came back to this side of the engine. Started off replacing the water pump. The inside of this engine is clean. It's got about 240 on it, it's pretty clean. Been took care of. Uh, replace the O-ring, thermostat, thermostat housing. That's stock too, so uh, made sure it had a new O-ring. Then, uh, I kept the outer pulley off. That's the one with all the riding on it. And it's held on by those three bolts that are in that triangle pattern. So that was all off. And uh, started with the crank, worked my belt up. Tensioner was off, idler pulley was off. Just crank a water pump. Then I installed the pulley in the belt beforehand. Put it on. Then I installed the idler pulley and the uh, tensioner. Release tension off of it. And snug those three bolts up just enough to where that pulley could spin either left or right. It's made like that for a reason. And I'm supposed to tighten those up all the way to torque until you put tension on the belt. And that's why you, you leave more slack to the left-hand side. So did all that and uh, checked, you know, all the nuts and everything, torque is all good. I made sure my tools would still go in to lock my cam back in at top dead center and the never took the one off on a crank. They look something like this. That's all I used on this job. So, uh, then after that, that's when I replaced the new outlet and uh, everything's back how I had it. <clears throat> so, then this is an important part. <clears throat> so, pretty much, simplest way I can put this is uh, I'm going to make marks on the uh, cam and the crank. I'm going to measure the rotation, uh, how many rotations, and by the theory of how this engine works, those marks should line back up perfectly. Then I'll know it's in time. And I shouldn't feel any kind of a uh, sudden resistance, like uh, valves hitting piston heads while turning the crank. So what I did, those two crosses, you make a mark to something stationary and then on the pulley. And I did the same. On the crank down to the bottom of the block into the oil pan. So if I turn this crank right here, two full revolutions, uh, the cam will turn one revolution, and all these marks will line back up. The, well, the two I just showed you. Uh, so I did do that, and I did it uh, a handful of times, at least uh, at least four or five times. And uh, there's no resistance, so this thing's in time. I, uh, I'm gonna give everything a one over and button her up here. I'm sure y'all can figure out the rest.
ain't, I ain't even kidding. It's not my style. Uh, it was a fun learning experience, but it's for sale now. It's uh, running damn near like it just rolled off the assembly line. Building boost, no issues.